Hello, my name is David Larson, KK4WW, amateur radio operator. I've been a ham radio operator for nearly 59 years. And today we're talking about antenna tuners, and particularly this Drake NMM10. We're located here at the Floyd Community Amateur Radio Station in Floyd, Virginia. Been having a lot of fun talking about different antenna tuners, and today we have this Drake antenna tuner, which represents tuners uh, in the 60s and 70s. So it's old, but not real old. So let's take a look inside and on the front and the back and see what it looks like. Very, very fine equipment that Drake built. Well, let's take a look at the controls on the front of this Drake MN7 antenna tuner or matching network as they refer to it. This probably represents the, the 70s type technology, even though tuners basically don't change. Drake made uh, wonderful equipment, uh, better known for their tube equipment. They did uh, make some solid state equipment in their later years, but they're well known for their tube equipment, and I have a good bit of it myself, wonderful equipment. Of course, the SWR meter over here measures uh, VSWR, which stands for voltage standing wave ratio, once you set it up correctly. And here's the controls for setting it for VSWR or for watts and to set the meter for full scale. Here's your antenna switching, different antennas. If we're using balance, it has to put external balance on it. Ground or dummy load. And down here, this band switch down here actually uh, switches both inductance and capacitance uh, in the uh, tuning circuit for these bands from 160 through uh, 10 meters. Over here is your variable uh, capacitors for the reactive tuning and the resistive tuning. And then step functions, fixed capacitors can be switched in to increase the capacitance or decrease the capacitance, giving us extended range here. So let's take a look inside and uh, see this nice workmanship in here. Like I said, this unit is probably in the range of 40 years old. Still beautiful inside. Here's those capacitors down here that give you the step function along with the variable capacitor. And here's the capacitors down here for this particular uh, capacitor, the variable capacitor and the fixed capacitors. Back here is the uh, circuitry for the SWR bridge. Here's a switch for switching the various um, outputs and connecting uh, to the various antennas and dummy load and so forth. And down here at the bottom, nice ceramic switches. Very nice solder job in there. Nice big ceramic switches down there too. And uh, an additional coil for inductance. And your main inductance coil. And you see the taps down here we're selecting the various inductances. So let's turn this around and take a look from the back side. Well, on the back side, we have to, if we want to use a ballon, we have to put an external ballon on here. But here's our ground connection. So where we hook up our transmitter and uh, outputs for antenna one, antenna two. Or if we want a dummy load, we hook it up here. So pretty simple on the back. But again, as all antenna tuners we see, it's pretty simple. It consists primarily of uh, capacitors, variable capacitors, and inductors as an impedance matching device. So we can match the output of the transmitter impedance with the antenna feed line impedance. That's all it does. Well, let's take a look at the schematic diagram for this. Drake NM7. The circuit over here is simply the uh, SWR bridge or power meter. Here's your variable inductor and the fixed inductor. And this switch is not only inductance, but also you see some capacitance in here. That's on the front panel. You see that switch labeled 10 meters through 6 meters. 
Here's the two variable capacitors for tuning reactants and of the uh, unit. And to, to switch in additional fixed capacitors across this variable, give a larger range of capacitance. And also here's the capacitors here, switched in with this across this capacitor, giving a larger range of capacitance. And here Let me remind you that antenna tuners do not make a poor antenna or poor antenna feed system work any better. What they do allow, though, is allow impedance matching between the output of the transmitter and the feed system, so you have maximum power reaching the system. And this is usually measured with SWR, and you want an SWR of one-to-one -one or close to one-to-one. -to -one. What happens when you have a higher, higher SWR? Well, you have a reflected wave, and depending on how much that is, it can cause distortion of the signal, or it can actually go back and damage some of the transmitter components. Well, thank you so much for watching our video. Happy hamming, and have a nice day.